third game of the season for the Wareham Gateman, the third home game of the season for the Wareham Gateman, but the first game here at Spillane Field since Monday, because the last time this team took the field, it was a home away from home game on Wednesday against YD. Not a very good homecoming game. 10-3 loss to the visiting team, YD Red Sox. Let's talk about that game. First of all, Gabe Genovese, Jonah Carp. You're watching the Gateman pregame show, Gabe. Let's break down that loss back on Wednesday. The pitching didn't really show up for the Gateman. No, not at all. Ten runs for YD. The Gateman had eight hits in that ball game. YD had nine extra base hits in the game. Connor Larkin, starter for the Gateman, only went two innings in that game. It was a quick 4 nothing deficit after three innings for the Gateman. They were able to battle back a little bit, made it 4-3 to three at one point, and then it was all YD from there. The hitting for YD was pretty exceptional. The hitting for Wareham, not as of exceptional. Exactly. Benjamin Sems had three hits for Wareham. Everyone else had five hits combined. The bats never really got going. Sims did hit a two-run home run. Again, part of that uh, making that little comeback there to make it 4-3. But after that, like I said, it was all YD. The YD bullpen did a fantastic job of shutting down Wareham. It wasn't that long ago. It was only two days ago that the Wareham Gateman last took the field. But in case you forgot, Gabe and I were on the call. Here are the highlights. From Monin Park at BC High, it's a home away from home game for the Wareham Gateman as they get set to take on the YD Red Sox on this beautiful Wednesday evening. Boy, we're excited for some baseball. But joined alongside Gabe Genovese, I'm Jonah Carp. Punches one over the third base bag, and that'll drop in for a base hit and roll all the way down the line. Austin Wells comes home to score. Jake Suttleston pulls in safely at third base. And Jeff Costello moves all the way to second base with an RBI, the first of the ball game. And it goes now one run home in the inning, one nothing YD. Popped up in the air. That might stay in the infield. No, it goes to shallow center. Sems the shortstop going back and calling off everybody. Jake, Jake Suttleston tagging from third, and he'll make it in safely. Well, you don't see that too often. A pop-up in shallow center field leading to a sacrifice fly, and it's 2-0. Yeah, a better throw from Sims, and that's an easy out. Got the long hop he wanted on the throw, but it was way down the third base line. That pitching, or that, excuse me, if that throw is to the plate, I think they've, I think they've got, excuse me, Suttleston running from third. 3-1. Hit high pretty well in the left, ranging toward the line. Is it fair? It is. That ball is gone. Drew Sims with a two-run shot. And the Gatemen have cut the lead in half here in the fourth. The 1-0. Hit high and pretty deep to right. Nanny going back near the track, and he can't make the catch. That one one hops the wall. Rudick's heading for third. Sem scores easily, and Rudick dives in with an RBI triple. Breaking ball hit hard and pretty deep to right once again, and this one is caught over the shoulder by Otsuka, but it does the job. A sacrifice fly for Wells. Wold scores. It's 6 3 wide deep. Looking to break this game open. The pitch. Lifted in the air down the right side into fair territory. Going back to first baseman Teeter. It's over his head. One run home. Two runs come home to score. Palmer goes all the way to third base. And a bloop single drops in a two run bloop. Makes this a 10-3 advantage. Drew Swift, a pinch hit, two-run single. 1-2, runner takes off. The pitch, check swing, ground ball down to first. Down on one knee is Wold, takes it to the back himself, and that'll do it. A home game away from home for Wareham, and they are steamrolled against the visiting team. YD, all over the gate, Mim. 10-3, your final score. Well, we knew this was a high-powered YD offense. Coming into this game, 11 runs combined between the first two, 10 against Wareham. We knew this was high-powered. We knew this was going to be a tough offense to stop, and it seemed like every single ball a Red Sox player hit was on the screws. Yeah, they've now scored 21 runs through their first three games. You said it. Every ball they hit was just finding a gap or finding the line. Everything was landing. It was just one of those nights 
for the Gateman, and, and that YD offense not only showed up, but their pitching showed up as well. The Gateman now hitting just 194 through their first two games. We'll see if the bats get going today. We will see the Gateman take the field today, look to put that loss in the rearview mirror. We're going to preview today's game. Addison Van Patten is going to talk with head coach Jerry Weinstein when we return after this quick break. One of the area's best restaurants is located right up the street, Brewfish Bar and Eatery. Brewfish offers 20 rotating craft beers on tap and creative pub food. Check out their off-the-menu brunch with a Bloody Mary bar and $5 mimosas on Sundays. Join us for outdoor dining and drinks under the tent or for live music every weekend, located on Route 105 in Marion. Here with manager Jerry Weinstein. Now, Jerry, we are back for our first Red Shirt Friday of the season. We're one-on-one -on, -one on the season. How do you feel so far? Well, I feel fun. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, it's early in the year. we got a long ways to go. Now, quite a few roster changes since we spoke last. Bedell, Del Castillo, Ward have all been activated. What are your plans for them? Well, to play them, uh, we'll, you know, we, we will play everybody on our roster. You know, we, we don't, nobody sits here, and we rotate it around make sure everybody plays. Now, uh, we talked a lot about having 18 strikeouts so far on the season over the past two games. Of course, we have a couple rainouts. According to WeinsteinBaseball.com, 69% of strikeouts start with a first pitch strike. How do you plan to apply that to today? We have struck out 18 times or we've struck 18 guys out? Which one? We have struck out 18 times. Well, we've got to do a better job with two strikes. And we've got to do a better job with less than two strikes when we get a good pitch to hit. And then we have to make adjustments with two strikes. Early in the year, though, it's, it's tough on these guys. Wooden bats, and most of them haven't been hitting. And so it takes time. And the game is a lot more complex and a lot faster here. You have a couple of your player development guys focusing on a lot of stats and analysis, and I hear you guys giving sermons before the games about what they need to do uh, according to launch angle and different stats like that. Are you big on statistics, and how are you applying that to the game this summer? Well, I mean, we're not overloading guys with statistics. We don't talk about launch angle. We talk about ball flight, but, uh, you know, stats are an indicator of performance, and so we have to pay attention to stats. All right, thank you very much for talking with me. Thank you so much, Anderson. Welcome inside Around the Cape. I'm Jay Blake alongside Ryan LeMay, taking you Around the Cape Week today and all the action outside of what's going to happen here at Splane Field come 645. And we start off at White House Field in Brewster, where the Katua Cataliers at 2-1, second best record in the West Division, take on the Brewster Whitecaps at 0-2, the fifth worst record in the East Division for Katuit. Starting for them will be Zach McCambly out of Coastal Carolina for Brewster. It'll be Jimmy Ramsey out of Kentucky who faced this very Gateman team on Monday. Had one inning pitch, three straight strikeouts versus Wareham on Monday. Brewster 0-2 in the season. Ryan, what do they got to do to get their first win of the year? Well, watching them Monday here at Spillane Field, they were just lacking some offense. You know, Wareham pitchers dominated them. And as we saw it against Whitey Yarmouth, like, I don't think that our pitching for Wareham is very, that very good. So, I mean, obviously it's more Bruce's offense than it's for Wareham's pitchers. So, I think Bruce needs a lot more offense going forward. And that YD offense did pummel the Gateman pitching staff to the tune of nine extra base hits, as we hear Jonah and Gabe say on the pregame show. The big thing for Bruce, if they want to get that first win, is going to be shutting down Aubrey Major of Xavier. He was three for five with two doubles against Hyannis on Wednesday for Katua. If they want to win this ball game tonight, Aubrey Major may very well be a very big factor. Yeah, Katua's been very average so far, 2-1 and one on the season. They haven't really stood out to me in any fashion, but they are a very solid team, so I expect them to get the victory tonight against Brewster. So we go from the fifth worst team in the East Division to the best team in the West Division. They'll play host the Hyannis Harbor Hawks tonight, who are 0-2 in the bottom place in the Western Division against the best team in the West in the film with the Commodores at 2-0. Hyannis, though, tonight, but we have Holt Jones of Clemson starting tonight, the 6-foot, 8-inch Pitcher out of Clemson University going for foul. It'll be Chris Gonzalez of Stetson but for foul. The big thing all season long has been their pitching. Only one earned run in two games. Tune of 16 strikeouts in just four walks. Hyannis versus foul with foul. Obviously a very big threat to the Gateman if they want to get to that back-to-back -back title. How worried should the Gateman be about foul? I think the Gateman should be very worried about uh, foul with They are a very good team. As I mentioned in the last pregame show, they have 15 players from top 25 schools in the nation, so they're a very good team. But also, this does not bode well for Hyannis because they have the least amount of runs scored in the league so far. And Falmouth's pitching has only allowed one run, so it could be a rough night for them tonight. And Falmouth has the lead, 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 leading ERA at .50 through two games. Yes, is through two games, but the pitching staff keeps anything up like that throughout the season. They'll be well on their way to a Cape League title. But we go from Wareham to just across the bridge to Bourne. They're at 0-2, but they'll play host tonight to the YD Red Sox. A potent offense for the Gateman. 
fell victim to in their last matchup. YD's at 2-1, and one, tied for the best record in the East Division for YD. Ryan Moore will start out of Old Dominion University. One of the big things for him in his regular season, his college season, was his walks, averaging 2.71 walks per nine innings pitched. On board, on the other hand, they'll go with the hometown kid out of UMass, Sean Harney for YD. Their offense exploded against the Gateman on Wednesday. Can they keep that up? Yeah, for sure. What impressed me most about the YD offense is it's not just one player that's standing out to me. I mean, of course, Eister is very good. Andrew Eister, he also played really well in that game against Wareham. But it's basically everyone on that roster can hit the ball anytime. So they're definitely a threat going forward, I feel like. And the thing to watch for for YD is just what you said, building off of Wednesday. Can they do it again? They scored 10-plus runs for the first time since July 29th of 2018, just a season ago. They're averaging seven runs per game, and if they can keep that up, well, they might very very well be the team to beat in the East Division. I mean, they were the team to beat last season as well, the best record, so I wouldn't be surprised if they'd have the same result this season as well. One of the big things for YD would be that playoff attempt to get to that CCBL Finals. Last year, they made it as the one seed, but fell victim to a Brewster team that barely made it into the playoffs as the four seed. They ended up going to the West Division Finals against Chatham before losing. But then again, YD just needs to build off that good start against what against the Gateman in their last game and try and build off of that tonight against Bourne. And now to the final game of the evening at 7 o'clock out in Chatham. It'll be Chatham versus Harwich. Harwich at 1-1, one one, the fourth best record in the East Division for Chatham. They're also in first place, a big tie in first place in the East with three of the five teams all at 2-1 and one for Harwich. They'll start with Buddy Hayward out of Harvard. For Chatham, it'll be R.J. Davovich out of ASU. The teammates of Chatham angler Spencer Torkelson, who the Gateman will see on Sunday. But for Chatham, their pitching has been fantastic all season long. 35 strikeouts and 27 innings pitch to lead the CCBL. But you think Chatham has what it takes to make it back to the CCBL finals? I, I definitely think they have the talent, but I'm just not sure about their early results so far. I mean, they've had to come back from behind two times already this season and go back and get wins. So I need more consistency from their offense, I feel like, if they actually want to compete for a title this season. And talking about that offensive consistency for Chatham, they lost one nothing to Falmouth on Wednesday, and that was a game where the pitching dominated. They only limited Falmouth to one run, but that Falmouth pitching staff just really overpowered Chatham and didn't let them score a run pitch shutout. Yeah, I mean, that was the opening night for Chatham at their home field. They got embarrassed getting shut out, not really getting many hits out there. So, I mean, they can't have many more performances like that if they actually want to be a competitive team this uh, summer, I feel like. So Gabe and Jonah will have your game updates throughout the game on all the games going around the Cape. But after this break, we'll throw it back to Gabe and Jonah in the studio to break down the starting pitching matchups and the starting lineup before we get set for first pitch right here at Spillane Field between the Wareham Gateman and the Orleans Firebirds. Up next in the Gateman pregame show on GBN. Shop from home year-round on Gateman.org. You can customize your Gateman gear from any device, anywhere. We offer a large selection of apparel and unique gifts 24-7, 365. Hard to find sizes, colors, and styles. Youth clinic registration is also available. Visit us today and remember us for holiday gifts at Gateman.org. Back here on GBN for the Gateman pregame show. Gabe Jonah with you. We're going to break down the Chatham Bars in starting lineups for both teams. Let's start with the visiting team, the Orleans Firebirds. Who's your player to watch? I'm going to go with Max Troiani, who's batting cleanup today for Orleans. Division II school out of Bentley, but hit 320. He was all he was an all-region player this year. He has power in that cleanup spot. Curious to see how it plays today. If you're batting cleanup in a Cape League starting lineup, you're going to be a pretty darn good hitter. For the Gateman batting cleanup tonight, it's a new player out of Miami. Exactly what I was going to say. Adrian Del Castillo also batting cleanup. Hit 336 in the ACC this year. Was part of the Collegiate Baseball All-Freshman team. He just got to this Gateman team two days ago. Of course, rained out yesterday. Didn't get to play. He's in the lineup today. All right, those are players to watch in the starting lineups. Taking the field today. Taking the bump today for Orleans. Who, who do you have to watch? Jared Lane. Lanes is going to be on the bump, excuse me, out of Navy. Had a very good year for Navy, just under 4 ERA. Struck out 73 in just 71 innings pitched. He does get a little wild, though. 12 hit by pitches, 11 wild pitches. We'll see how that command plays a factor today. And his counterpart is Aaron Davenport. Davenport out of Hawaii for Wareham today. He struggled a little bit, just under a 5 ERA this past season. For Hawaii, but he's got punch out stuff as well, just under a strike out an inning. So it's Davenport and it's Lanes, it's Orleans and it's Wareham at 645 first pitch. Gabe and I will be on the call. Make sure you tune in. 